The sport of off-road racing is full of incredible stories, wild characters, legends, and even villains. We cover it all on offroadracer.com, but there's only so much we can put down in an article. Sometimes we have to dig a little deeper, and that means sitting down with some of our industry's most influential characters and hitting record. Welcome to the Off-Road Racer Podcast, a Mad Media production, made exclusively for offroadracer.com. Each month, we'll go beyond the dirt into the homes, shops, and lives of the most interesting and game-changing icons of our sport. You'll hear about their history, success, failure, and everything in between as we pull back the curtain and reveal the stories of their lives. I'm your host, Matt Martelli, and this is the Off-Road Racer Podcast. I'm Matt Martelli. This is Off-Road Racer slash Jim Beaver show podcast, right? Yeah. How are we rolling? We're, we're what, like, <laughs> we're 10 or 12 podcasts in over this SEMA. Like, we've cracked yeah. them out. And this is my brother from another mother, Jim Beaver. And we're joined by my recent good friends, yeah. DJ Fashion. Fasten. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, what's up, man? Just enjoying SEMA. This is, uh, I haven't been here in four years. I've, I've had a truck in here, uh, like a custom built truck for like six years. Haven't been back in like four. So, it's good to be back. I forgot how much walking there really is. Yeah. So. I Have you done the Tesla tunnel thing yet? I did actually. Yeah, yeah that it was, saves that was a really lot of cool. time. That was really neat. Yeah, so I um, I took the cowboy boots off and put the sneakers on because I'm like, ah, this is not gonna cut it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to have like running shoes basically because you're <laughs> pretty much you're, you're gonna do. I think last year we were averaging like seven miles, right? Gosh. So it's part of the deal. You got to walk around, see everything. Well, it's like I was working with a brand and I told them I was like trade show booth. I'm like the good and the bad is is like. You want people in your booth, and they're like, yeah. I was like, well, put, like, three layers of padding under your carpet. Literally. And I was like, because when people walk in your booth and it's like a cloud, oh, they'll stick around. The best. Yeah. You know, I'll listen to any spiel you tell me. I don't care <laughs> yeah. what it is. I'll be there forever. Yeah, yeah I was I, like, I, you know, the people just put the carpet over the concrete, they don't oh, get yeah. people to stick around long. No, not at all. No, I'll, I'll let you pitch me on anything I don't need for an hour, as long as I can stand <laughs> on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so you got into the, into the deep end of off-road, right? Yeah, I jumped feet first. So, you found the Brenthal guys. Was that online originally, or how'd you how'd you find that? So this is like a weird deal. So, I was, I knew eventually I was going to get hurt in sprint car racing. It wasn't, it, you know, anybody that races sprint cars. It's not, you know, if it's just when and how bad you're going to get hurt. So, I was like, man, I'd like to do something different. And I was looking for something circle track wise, and and uh, inevitably, you know, no pun intended, since I'm a YouTuber, I was on YouTube. And I had a uh, BJ Baldwin video pop up. It was that Monster Energy one. And I was like, this is, this is wild. Like, this is sick. How do I get into this? And the problem was the barrier to entry. Right. They don't have anything like this on the East Coast whatsoever. It's all circle track this. this you know, we have nothing off-road. Like, it's all flat land out there. So I started looking online, and I came across Brentho. And I got in contact with Jonathan, I think, in 2020. Yeah. And uh, that's when all, like, that COVID shit happened and you know the world was going to end and everybody's melting down so uh that put the brakes on it and i raced sprint cars for two more years and then i'm like you know what i'm done and i finally just called jonathan up and i'm like i'm ready to do it like what do i got to do so we scheduled test days i went out there in johnson valley with uh, chuck dempsey and uh i, I gotta admit this okay this is I, I gotta chalk up the ego a little bit i used to think like we were like real badasses on circle track right i'm like man this is like we're so cool what we're doing I got in that trophy truck, and I'm like, these guys are nuts. They are true cowboys. <laughs> true cowboys. Yep. Think, for sure. Think about sprint car, though. That being your background, it lends itself well to so many things. Like car control and things like that, you having that, coming to off-road, like that, that's a really good base. Right. You know, you, you've got the getting sideways, like the car control. You understand what the vehicle's doing, yeah. how to react. Like, so it's actually a really good base to start an off-road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, eh. <laughs> I, I do agree. No, I'm not going to disagree. It's just, it's a lot more, like, these guys are so talented. Um, just to be able to read the terrain. You know, like, you don't know what's coming up next. Like, the Men 400. Like, I was going out there. I might as well have been blindfolded, honestly. Like, it just was so, that was gnarly. It but was, you did great, man. Yeah, it wasn't bad. I, we had our streaks of bad luck. You know, we lost power steering at one point and then we had a belt break we were you know we, we were stranded for a total of two and a half hours on race course 
And um, it was kind of funny. During the Mint, I had a new truck, brand new truck that they put me in. Well, they didn't put the sticker with a diagram of where the belt goes. So I have no radio communication whatsoever. Like, we couldn't radio to main pit for some reason. They, um, it was just, it was a hassle. So I spent so much of my time trying to route this belt. I'm like, I've never even seen the front of this motor. Like, sprint car, got you, no problem, you know. But it was, it was difficult. So that, the power steering issues, all that. But it all played into just, like, the character building between my navigator and I at the end of it, really. Yeah, you've got a special navigator, right? I do, yeah. <laughs> About a six foot two tall navigator that barely fits in a rental truck, and uh, it doesn't yeah. know anything about navigation. Nothing, or trucks. nothing. So <laughs> I actually took my cameraman from YouTube, and I'm like, dude, you know, it'd be really wild. It's like you train and go, you know, Erica, she trained him and all that. Like, I'll pay for it. Like, you go get trained, you become a navigator, and we're just we're gonna be the two idiots that tried the Mint 400, and sure enough, that was that was what we did. But we finished, so I'll take that. Tell you what, finishing your first Mint 400, that's not easy. Like, that's, that's a high-five moment. Like, Well, he warned me. We were at the UFC fight, what, three days before the Mint or something like that. I don't know when it was. And he's like, listen, man, he's like, the first two laps, you're going to really enjoy yourself. The third lap, you're going to hate life. And the fourth lap, you're going to want to get out of the truck. And that was the most true statement anyone has ever told me. Yeah. That race is just something else. Like, I mean – Go to your local hardware store, get in the paint shaker for eight and a half hours, get out of it, and tell me how you'd feel. You'd probably feel like hell. Yeah. yeah. Off-road is enjoyable before the race, and it's enjoyable like three days after the race when your body's somewhat recovered. But there's that window of time during the race. Like, nobody goes, this is the most fun I've ever oh, had. No. Like, <laughs> Not even close. No, no. <laughs> Not even close. Like, to me, the whole off-road scene is it was something that, like, the reason I wanted to come to off-road, because I wanted to give myself a challenge outside of circle track. I never wanted to be the guy who just raced regionally or nationally or anything. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I have great friends in circle track racing, but this off-road stuff is 10 times harder than circle track could ever be. Because, I mean, like you told me, you're like, there's going to be 500 race vehicles that are going to go through that same rut. Yeah. And on lap four, the rut that was a foot and a half is now three and a half feet deep. And it's just like... You just get shit whipped the whole time. I just, I could not fathom how much it was going to take a toll on my body. I really couldn't. Yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, cowboy shit. You know, like. Oh, it, for sure. It, it's funny because, like, obviously, like, I respect every form of racing. <clears throat> but there's nothing like what we do. You know, it, it, it's like the UFC of, of motorsports, right? Yeah. And, uh. I love, dude. I was stoked, like you know, when when I saw you, you know, come in and start talking about it, and, and you know, then start getting involved and, and you know, get with the Brentals, which is they run a great program, right? Yep. And then you know, come in and and you know, the cool thing is like you didn't have this crazy big ego, like, hey man, I'm here to win, because I always have to tell people, hey, you're not going to win. No. You need to get to the finish. Let's focus on that and then build, right? Yes. Build yep. your build your skill set and your race craft so that you know at some point you can compete, right? Yeah, definitely. But it's it's tough. Like your ego wants to just run forward and and go after everybody, but that's a surefire way to oh. have a short day. You're, you're going to end your day. Be, being an off uh, being a good off road racer is it's it's a work in progress. I mean, it's a journey, and it's like I tell people there's nobody that comes in. We were talking with B.J. Baldwin yesterday about the same thing, like. Nobody comes in as good right away. No. You're just not. You That's know? just not. There's people that have talent that come in and like, all right, they're, they're all right. But yeah. nobody comes in and just wins and runs away with something their first race. It just doesn't happen. No, that can happen in circle track. It's weird. But off-road, 0% chance that happens. If so, the whole field crashed out at that point. And yeah. You, yeah. you finished. Yeah, maybe there's a fluke deal like that. But right. you know, it wasn't like you were leading wire to wire or something no, like that. No, not going to happen. All right, Chase, number 23, it's 2023. This championship's yours. Let's show these guys what's up. Easy, boys. It's not over yet. Big dog still got to eat. <laughs> Whatever you say, big dog. Seriously? These fools think I'm fried? They know the deal. For, for you, what's been the most kind of surprising thing for you coming into this? I think the level of concentration that you have to hold between 
50 laps on a dirt track and 8 to 10 hours in a trophy truck, there is a massive difference in that because I can consistently understand and know my car is going to work great at the top of the racetrack on a circle track. I have no clue what to expect. I have no clue that whoop section. I have no, you just don't have any idea. So I think the hardest part for me is just understanding the race course. I mean, I grew up on the East Coast. I've never been in the desert until now. I, most people grew up driving side-by-sides, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, all that. They know terrain. Uh, no, I, I know a cornfield. That's about it. Right. You know, it's <laughs> about it. So when you look at it from that aspect, it's just a massive learning curve that I, I just never expected it to be as hard as it was. I got, I got humbled my first race, which was that battleground race. And I, I actually texted you. I was like, yeah. hey, man. I was like, what do you think if I ran this battleground race before the Mint 400? You said that, was the, that is the greatest idea you've had yet. And we, we laughed about it, but I'm like, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah. If I'd have gone into the Mint, we'd have never finished. I, I mean, I truly can tell you that. Like, yeah, it's, it was rough. It's a lot. I mean, you know, have you found something, though, in the process of it that you're like, that you really enjoy? The challenge. Like, in like a really screwed up way. I deal with all of my companies the same way. It's like a sport to me. I like the challenge of, like, how do we make more money this week than we did last week? Well, the same thing goes for off-road. It's a challenge all of the time because, I mean, take a guy like B.J. Baldwin. Okay, The guy's still honing his craft every single time he goes out there. That guy's only going to get better. And the same thing. The more you do anything, it's repetitiveness. Like, you're going to get better eventually. So that's that's the way I look at it. And I understand I'm going to have to put in the time, the money, the energy and the effort in order to be a top five contender one day. So my goal right now is I want to go out there. I want seat time. We're going to spend a lot of time in Johnson Valley over the winter time and just hone that craft and understand the race vehicle. Because if you don't understand the race vehicle and how those components work and what's actually going on, how are you supposed to understand if you're going to hit that at running 70 versus 30, what it's going to do. So it's all the time about learning for me. And I'm a student of the sport, and I'm, I'm here to learn from anyone and everyone I can. Yeah, that, it's, that's a good approach. Yeah. You know? I mean, Very humble approach. It's the approach that will make you a winner at some point. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny because, like, again, you know, it's, as the promoter, it's not up to me, right? right. The, the Mojave Desert is going to yeah. handle it, right? <laughs> yep. You know, all we're doing is going, hey, start here, go here, and come back, right? Yeah. And we put up some shitters, and that's called holiday, right? It's easy <laughs> that's in case to look at it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just mean in terms of like the chaos theory of like you, you know, even the top guys, all their prep, everything is going to be perfect, and a boulder will get moved into the race course that they'll clip, and that'll end up, that'll end their day. Yep. Right. So it's it's completely unpredictable, but. If you go into it with this mentality like you're talking about, you'll be there at the end. And what's going to happen is is you're going to have a race and you're going to be like, shit, man, I'm top five, right? And then you're going to do it again. You're going to go, okay, last lap, I'm top five. I can get on the podium, right? And then you do that. And then you start moving up that podium, and pretty soon you're, you're on that top spot. It, it's a weird thing, like you – you, you have to build on your, you know, finishes, your failures, you know, uh, e- even once you get to this top five, you're like, you're analyzing it. You're like, could I have gone faster? Yeah, but how, how much faster? I remember Rob Mack told me something, and it kind of blew my mind. He goes, uh, he goes, hey, do you know how much time I won by? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, do you know how much time I, I won the – that year, he won the ball 1,000. He's like, do you know how much time I won by? I said, no, I don't. And he goes, neither does anybody else. It's just racing wow. just fast enough to beat everybody and not more than that. Because you push right. harder, you're going to break. Right? Yeah. Well, now you, you just went from winning or podium to tenth. Yeah. Or whatever zero to be. zero. Yeah. I don't know how many press releases I've written or read that said, <laughs> I was leading, and then this happened, right? <laughs> Story of everyone's Dude, life. I hate that. It's like, I was leading, but. Yeah. No. Don't even include it in there at that point. It, it's almost just like pouring salt in a wound, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I understand. Like, I, I think with, uh, with every racer, we always are looking for those, like, PR moments. Because sure. Because back in the day, like, that's what sells and all that. But 
uh, you know, I think I, I'm taking a way different approach to racing. Like I'm very serious about it and I wouldn't be spending the money that I'm spending if I wasn't. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I understand there's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars a year spent on figuring this shit out because yeah. there's no other way to go around it. Well, and for you, like we were talking earlier at breakfast about, you know, all the content that you produce and, you know, and how you're turning this into a content plan. And, and honestly, I'm, you know, I'm stoked, like you're introducing your audience, you know, from the East Coast to what we're doing out here in, in a way that I think is um, a- approachable because it's one of it's one of them. Right. It's not right. like, OK, BJ Baldwin, dude's rad, but like a dude and, you know, that, you know, is from the East Coast might not relate to him because he's like, yeah, that's. That's some crazy West Coast guy. Yeah. All, the, all those guys are crazy, right? <laughs> got their hats backwards and yeah, all that, yeah. All they wear is black. Yep. You know, they, they've got <laughs> vans on, you know, like. So I, I think that that's really important that we, you know, we get more people like you in the sport and then talking about it and sharing it with people. Um, Absolutely. So that, that part of it I think is cool and it's going to be fun. Well, it's, that's like, you know, when we were at breakfast this morning, we were talking about like just – the different fan base, like my fan base, I guarantee 99% of them until I raced them at 400 had no clue what a trophy truck was. They had no clue about desert racing. And a lot of people that follow me back home with circle track racing, they may have seen like a desert trophy truck online, but they, they've never paid any attention to it because it's just not in their box. And unfortunately, the, the, the worst thing you can do in life is stay in the same box. Yes. And if you stay in that same box, you will only be remembered for what you did inside of that box, not outside of it. Yep. And to me, could I stayed in, I could have stayed in circle track racing and won a ton of races, been you know, just one of the, the, the best in what we were doing there in sprint cars and, and especially the series that we were in. It was like a good group of people. But at the end of the day, I just got, I, I hate to say I got bored with it because it's like, what kind of legacy am I going to leave behind? If I have the opportunity to go and do something really awesome, why am I just going to stay where I am? Like, I cannot, I love change more than anyone. Like, well, I don't know why, but I just do. I, and I think people want to see that journey, right? Because they want to see it, you know, they want to they want to see your experiences, right? Right. Because, you know, you've got a group of people who are following you, and, you know, they they may have started because of, you know, the ghost hunting stuff that you do and, you know, or, or whatever it is. But but now there's, you know, you're showing another side of you of like, hey, I circle track race. Now I've got into this off-road racing. And uh, I think that's a way way more like organic way that right. people can learn about this. You know, like nobody needs more stuff shoved down their throat. But no. I think they enjoy seeing the process of you going through that. And how many races do you have underneath your belt now? Two. Two off-road races so yeah. far, yeah. Let's, so I, I think the way you're approaching it, this one thing I've learned, and you know, and I've been between podcasts and video and everything. I was producing content for over a decade now, but it was like I, I had an interesting moment earlier this year, and it kind of simulates what you're doing. It's like, um, you know, I've got to deal with Kawasaki, and they gave me a stand-up jet ski, and I go, I haven't been on a stand-up in 20 years, and I'm like, and I used to ride a lot, but I'm like, 42 year old guy, you know. It's put on some weight, like, all right, I'm going to go back to stand-up jet skiing. And I, like, put it out there. I'm like, I'm going to do this the most humble way. Like, you guys see me winning races, (laughs) doing all this cool stuff. I'm going to show you the raw realism of a 42-year-old guy that's a little bit overweight going back to jet skiing. Bingo. And I put it out there on YouTube, and, like, the first videos were horrible, man. It's just (laughs) just (laughs) me crashing. People are laughing and everything else. By the end of the summer, I'm taking that same jet ski, and I'm threading buoys. And people are like, Holy crap, oh, wow. we saw over a three- or four-month period this guy go from absolute dog shit yep. to actually decent. Yeah. And I showed the journey, and I did it in a humble way. And those videos now are still doing way better than any of my YouTube stuff, and I've developed this following in jet ski racing, you know, because it was like I approached it, and I see what you're doing in off-road, and you're like, hey, here's me stepping out of my box, and I'm coming in here. And I'm doing it in a humble way, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to suck, but I'm going to get better. Absolutely. Enjoy the journey with me, and people are going to love it. Yeah. The first ever race, that battleground race, I barrel rolled the truck six times. I, I, I hit a sand wall. It looked like it was going to move. I'm going to be honest with both of you. I was like, oh, it's going to move. I'm going to just bump into it. Hell no. thing was hard as concrete. I hit that thing, <laughs> picked the back of the truck up, and when I went to counter into it, 
it was too far gone because it was just we were over rotated at that point and when it caught I mean, the in-car audio was the greatest thing. I, I yelled, oh, fuck, twice while we're in the air. I'm like, oh, no, this is bad. So the truck lands on its side, right? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, my dumbass just put my cell phone in this truck. I'm like, it probably came out of this pouch on the side. I said, I'm going to look for it. This is a prime video opportunity. Like, when you're, when you're a YouTuber, you're looking for any content. Well, the truck is destroyed. So I'm like, this is perfect. I get my phone out. And uh, here I am. I'm just selfie. I'm like, yep, just flip this trophy truck in the middle of the desert, blah, blah, blah. And my navigator, Chris, being my cameraman, he's like, dude, this is, it's not the time for this. Like, let's try to figure out how to get this thing back over. So, um, you know, we were trapped. I understand. Trying to flip over a 7,000-pound truck, probably a little harder than it looks. I tried to push on it. I was like a dumbass, but whatever. So we finally, uh, we got lucky because they dispatched rescue to a wreck up ahead of us, like, hours beforehand, and they just along so they flipped us back over thank goodness we get back going and we get to the end and I had a film crew there they put this video together for me and Chris is like my, my navigator Chris is like you're not gonna put that flip in there are you I'm like yeah I'm putting that flip in there like that's that's sick like yeah. people want to see that so when um when the video finally came out you, you hear chatter just people don't like you you know what I mean you know you're doing something right there for sure and uh, I call them the East Coast Hater Club, because there's a group of racers that just cannot stand my guts because you step outside and do something different than what they're doing or what yeah. they think you should. They got a big problem. So they're like, oh, yeah, CJ flipped his trophy truck the first race out. And um, I'm like, yeah, I was actually, like, really proud of it. I'm like, I found what not to do. Yeah. It's a learning curve. Found the limit. It was expensive. I mean, we still finished the race. It was a lot of cosmetic stuff. But at the end of the day, listen, I had a blast doing it. I learned a ton. And then... You know, I, for whatever reason, I decided my second race should be the Mint 400, and I just yeah. jump feet first. I just, gosh, that was dumb. That was dumb. Fun, but very dumb. Well, you know, I would recommend to people that they do some small races before they do the Mint. But I would too. it's also a trial by fire thing. You know, like at some point, you know, it's it's like fighting. At some point, you got to get punched in the face. Yeah, right? <laughs> and That's for sure. you're going to learn very quickly. You know, where you're at, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that's what, it, you know, like, and you, you listened, like you went out there, you didn't go nuts, right? You, yep. you had some issues, you, you overcame the issues, you, you got the full effect, right? When you got to the podium and I handed you a beer, you were like, I was, I was in it. You were ready, I was right? Ready. And, I was ready to kick that cold one back. That and, and, and that's, and that's a, a big part of that, right? Yeah. And, and then, you know, and then, you know, going on to, you know, whatever your next race is going to be in you know, making incremental improvements, right? And yeah. And, you know, and two, you're doing it smart. You're going to go get a bunch of seat time in the off season, you know, and learn, you know, and, yep. and be better and come back and go like, okay, I got this, right? Yeah. And just uh, keep improving. So. Well, racing against your dad is something that 90% of the racers in the world will never get. I've accomplished everything I wanted to do, and now he's just, like, taking the reins. I want to be remembered for being a, a huge part of short course, not just racing, keeping it alive, helping it grow. If it comes down to the last weekend and I'm in it, the boys better watch out. <laughs> my dad, um, my whole career, like growing up, so like, you know, we, we dabbled in the whole NASCAR deal and I, it's, it's no stranger. If you race, you gotta have money, whether yeah. it's sponsorship, family money, whatever. Um, I could only go so far on, on family money. And then once I came back from North Carolina and we did like a three-year run of the whole NASCAR deal, um, dad was like, all right, I'm done. If you want to race, it's on you. So that's when I started supporting all of my own racing. But what he did growing up, he never kept me, like I would start winning races in something and he would instantly, we'd sell that car and he'd move me to a different series or a different class, completely different race car. And he was trying to hone my skills all of the time. And it made it to where I literally had to be on my A game all the time. And I, I enjoyed that looking back at it. And, uh, you know, before, before he passed away, uh, he was really worried about the whole sprint car thing. He's like, you know, I just got a weird feeling about this. And that kind of weighed on me a little bit. Uh, probably shouldn't have let it weight on me, but, you know, I did. So that was a, another driving factor to going to off-road. I mean, when you can flip a trophy truck six times and you're really not sore the next day, that's pretty good. Yeah. But when I hit a wall running 80 – and a sprint car, and for three days I'm walking like just all gimped up. That's not fun. Yeah. Not fun at all. 
and the, and another thing like that you all may not realize because you're in this culture, your all's off road culture and the racing total different from circle track at circle track. We do not talk to each other. And if you do talk to each other, you're talking shit behind your back as soon as like that person walks away. And in off-road, I didn't know how to take it because everybody's coming up to me, shaking my hand. How's it going? Blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, if you need anything, let us know. That does not happen in, in, in dirt track. It just doesn't. Like, everyone stays to themselves. And I'm thinking, like, I, I saw, like, uh, in the Mint, I've seen videos where, like, other teams are helping other teams. I'm like, what is this? It's just yeah. so weird. Like, it's not what I'm used to. So, for me, it, it was culture shock. But you all are, like, some of the nicest it's... people it's you know, you know it kind of goes back to the cowboy thing though it's like we're cowboys and you know it's like when i strap my helmet on i realize that there's a good chance that i don't want to say a good chance but there's a chance i don't i, I mean i die you know you hate yep. to be morbid but there's a no, chance absolutely and it's like at least with circle track there's generally medics close you wreck even at the mint where it's you know it, it's not remote baja there's still a chance it's going to be a while absolutely. before medics can get there so it's like there's this, you know, friendship and this camaraderie. Like, yeah, we're competitors, and I'm going to race my ass off to beat you. But at the end of the day, I want to have a beer with you at the finish line. And if something goes Big wrong difference. on your car and you're flipped over and I know nobody can get there, I'm going to pull over and I'll, I'll, I won't finish my race or I'll, I'll, I'll wave a win off to help you to make sure that you can, you know what I mean, you're okay. Right. And it's just we all look out for each other, and I think it's just this weird thing because, like you said, we're cowboys and we're out, you know, lone wolves. And a lot of times, you know, you need help. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people lack the understanding of that concept, though, because uh, that's what I'm planning my content around is telling you everything that I've learned that I never knew could be such a valuable piece of information. And I look at also the fans at the Mint 400. I got I got like a really cool glimpse of, of them. Those are off-road enthusiasts. They can respect what you're doing because guess what? They probably own a side-by-side or they own some type of off-road vehicle, Jeep or something. And I love it because like at Tech and Contingency, they could buy products that they could go right and put on their UTV. They could go buy a rugged radio and, and install that whole system in there. There's so many different things like that where I believe 95% of dirt track fans have never stepped foot in that car. So they can't really relate to it. But when I'm going through that high-speed whoop section, and I'm, I'm man enough to admit it, scared to fucking death because <laughs> I've never done this before, and you're running 80 through it, and you're just like, this is going to end really bad. All of those people that you're going by, they can relate to it because they know that feeling. Yeah. Maybe not at that speed, but they know just how rough that terrain is. They have a, a different found respect for it, and, and I just I think that's very unique o- about off-road. Everyone can relate to that. The only thing I've ever seen that's similar to off-road, it's like we have off-road culture and we eat, sleep, breathe off-road. If I'm not racing, I'm out with my RV and I'm riding dirt bikes or UTVs. You know, I've got a Bronco build. I go out. I have fun in the rocks. Like, I eat, sleep, breathe this. You know, I, I'm a part of off-road culture. You don't have an IndyCar culture. No. You, you have IndyCar fans. Circle track. Right. You don't have circle track culture. You have circle track fans. And you've Bingo. got racers that are on the road driving every single weekend, yep. you know, but it's, there's not like a circle track culture. The only other thing I've ever found in motorsport that's like it would be drag racing. You've got guys that are wrenching in their garage on their hot rods every that, single weekend. That is true. You know, and, and they're out, you know, and they've got their local car club and they're, you yep. know, and they're hot rodding and they're, you know, so I mean, drag racing is the only other sport I've found where you live a drag race or a hot rod culture. You know, yeah. it's a culture. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Very you know, good point. It's, a, it's very hard to find that. You know, I guess maybe motocross, which is tied to off-road. There's people that eat, sleep, breathe motocross, that's and they're true. out on the weekends yeah. riding yeah, that, and racing. And, that's off-road. You know, but that's a part of off-road. So it's like the only other thing I've found is a drag race community, the hot rod community that eats, sleep, breathe it like we do in off-road. Yeah. Well, I but think, it's it's very tight-knit, too. Yeah, I think, I think to your point, you know, that, that is a very important tenement of our culture is, you know, how we help each other. And even guys, like, look – there's guys I don't like, you know, personally, we're not going to hang out, yeah. but if I see that they need something or, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to stop and help them. And, and I think you're right, Jim. I think part of that's born from like, you know, this idea that like, you know, there isn't, you know, you can't pawn that off on, you know, some safety crew or wh- wh- whoever it is. Cause you know, in general, we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and 
I also like it's that camaraderie of like, hey, I'm gonna kick your ass and then let's have a beer later. Yeah, you know. Um, but well, it's, it's a it's like you said, it's almost a UFC fight. Yeah, I and mean, you're you're wrestling the truck, you know. But we also have respect for each other after the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and nine I, times out of ten, they hug it out after a UFC fight. Right, well, yeah, and, exactly. And, yeah, and I think too, like Chuck Dempsey's a really good example of it. I mean, here's a guy who's been racing and, and in the sport and culture for years, and now he has this great position with Brenthal where he gets to like teach people the culture, you know, teach them how to drive, but also the, the culture part of it. And like, you know, he's the type of guy who's like, yeah, I want to bring people in so that they can race against me and I can beat them, you know, or you know, whatever, if they're better than yeah. me, they're going to beat me. Like that, that, you know, this culture thrives on that. Yeah. No. And he's, he's been a massive help to me. Yeah. Massive help. I mean, he's taught me so much just with just basic handling of the truck, what to do. I mean, like you don't think about this, but it's so second nature for you all. I didn't even know where to go check in for the race at. Right. But if you're in the culture and you're in the sport, you just know. It's the same thing if you came to a dirt track and you were going to race one of my sprint cars. You'd be like, all right, well, what do do I do? You have no idea, like, what's going on. And he's been a massive help to that. And I tell you, he's he's become, like, one of my best friends in an odd way. We have such an age gap. But, like, we get along great. We're always laughing, joking, having fun. And everyone I've met so far through this off-road experience, same way. Well, it's it's interesting because one of the things that I've always said is that off-road racing in particular attracts a certain type of person right this is not easy right yeah. this is you know you're gonna you know you're gonna spend in many ways your own money you know you've got to do work to get here you've got to do work when you're racing you know the people that you surround yourself they're gonna be burdened too so you start finding out who your real friends are absolutely you know e- yeah. even within your family you know it, it helps you know, uh, uh, bond your family more because they're like, look, we got to go support, you know, CJ or we got to go support, you know, Bill or Ted or whatever. And uh, it, it, that part of it is really cool to see, but it definitely attracts a certain type of person. And then, you know, once they're here and once they're in it, you you start kind of, I don't know, like it's that whole like same energy attracts same energy thing. And, um, you know, this is hard. If it was easy, they'd call it NASCAR, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can pick on them all we want. <laughs> I, I love taking shots at NASCAR, but no, the the um, you know the point being is that you know it, it is a challenge, and and just to just to want to do it takes a certain type of person. I do agree with that because it's a little intimidating. It's definitely intimidating. I mean, it can look fun on video, but I'll never forget. I went to Johnson Valley. I walked up that truck. I said, "Wow, this is way bigger than it looked on pictures." Yeah. And then you get in that thing, and you're like, okay, this is actually way different than you think it was going to. And I will say this, like, a lot of – I look at the future. I look at everything. I, I Nothing – I don't drive off the hood ornament with life, and I definitely don't do that in racing. Look as far down the racetrack as you can. Yep. I try to plan for that kind of stuff. And I another reason why I want to get into off-road racing more is because as much time as it does take up, I don't have to, with, you know, with the rentals, I don't have to be in the shop. I don't have to transport it. I don't have to worry about insurance on my toter home and the trailer and all that kind of stuff. You, it's, it's arrive and drive. You know, you buy a truck, you arrive, you drive, you send it back to their shop, and they do it. So it does make it pretty simple. But for me, that time is everything because I'm eventually, I'm eventually going to get married. I'm going to want to have kids. And I want them to grow up in this culture and not have to learn about the, standoff I don't even have to explain that, like the standoffish type of attitude of, like, dirt track racing. Assholes. Yeah, basically. Like, let's just... Yeah, I mean, you know it what is mean? what it is. Like, yeah, I mean, it's funny because, again, you know, we're, we're just, you know, we just had um, Christopher Pulvorde here, and he's, you know, started racing at 10. You know, he's oh, wow. He's 23, and he's 
you know, one of the best guys in his class. And, uh, <clears throat> and he has a really bright future. He's just about to take delivery of his four-wheel drive Mason. Oh, why? You know, so he's going to nice. get deeper in. But, you know, seeing the camaraderie, I'm sorry, seeing the relationship between him and his dad, like, they're best friends. Yeah. Right? And you don't see that much in this world, right? Yeah. So this is, a, you know, here's my plug for, for all the, the, the parents out there. This is a fantastic place to raise your kids, you know? Yep. If you want your kids to be successful in life, bring them to off-road racing because it's going to teach them a lot. A lot and of it, discipline. And it's going to, you know, strengthen the relationship between you and your kids. I mean, I can go down the list. Yeah. You and your dad, right? You know, now your daughter's getting of age. She's probably going to be racing. You know, the McMillans, the the Menzies, the the Herbs, you know. Hey, the list on goes on. on. I mean, it's just, you know? yeah. I mean, where do you start? The BJ, Lettners. BJ and his yeah. dad. I mean, yeah, BJ and you know, his dad. BJ, BJ's dad was a wheeler, deal. you know. It's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it, no, it's just that way. Yeah, it's. BJ's son's starting to race, too. Yeah, you, you see generations in this sport, you know, and that, that's it. I mean, we're, we're starting now sometimes, what, fourth generation we're starting to see? Like, yeah, it's starting to, we're starting to hit that fourth generation. Yeah. So. So it's that's like the, I, I watched uh, one of Bryce Menzies' pre-run videos. Like, I'm trying to learn about Baja, and I'm, like, watching anything and everything I can. And I see, like, that camaraderie between him and his friends, but him and his dad. Like, if my dad was still here on Earth, I, I would give every dollar I ever made previously and I ever will make to take him down to Baja and pre-run with him for a week because like it just looks so awesome it, it so is. like if they're I'm gonna look at the camera and if any of you are watching and listening to this and you have a dad cherish those moments with him when you're in victory lane smile with him get a picture with him like utilize that time that you have with him because everyone's sand is running out of that hourglass and you don't know how long you've got or they have no. so Never take that for granted, and if you can, spend every waking moment you can with them and have fun. And understand, we do this for fun. No one's making a living, really. There's a couple people making a living, but at the end of the day, what, what good are we doing if we're out there just being stressed out all the time? Have yeah. a little bit of fun. I, I, will tell you, <clears throat> I will tell you that one of the coolest experiences that I had was, you know, Killian, who works with me, he's my cousin, right? And, like, in no way did I ever think he was going to be involved in our business, right? He right. literally showed up, you know, with no shoes. Like, he, he had uh, Birkenstocks and was going to a show with my brother, and he just stayed too long. And I'm like, <laughs> you're, you're working, you know? Like, And then I remember putting him in BJ's trophy truck, and he just got out of the truck, and he was like, mind blown, know, right? mind blown, right? And, you know, and then, you know, what was even cooler is you know, first to share it with him and to see the light bulb go on with him. And I wasn't pushing it on him. Right. I was like, hey, I think this is dope. Check this out. You know, and, and you know, fortunately, he, he's into it. And, like, you know, he's a big part of our business now. Yeah. But his dad came down for a pre-run for the Ball 1000. And, you know, his dad's in his, you know, he's one of my, if not my favorite uncle that I grew up with. So to to have him come and to watch like how much he enjoyed it, like that was worth that was priceless, right? And he did it I mean, he did the whole thirteen hundred mile pre run with us in the oh, back wow. in the back of a razor. Oh right? So it was not like the easy I kept going, Hey, <laughs> Forget you, that. you can hop out and get in the chase truck and it's <laughs> like he's all nope, I wanna I wanna Take do the off. whole thing and have the whole experience, right? And uh, there were several times where I, I, I was like, hey, dude, just relax. Yeah. He's like, nope, I'm going all the way. But, dude, the memories we had from that pre-run, oh, outstanding. I can only imagine. But it's going to last with you forever. Totally. That, and that's, like, why I, I think I've really I, – I try to get my family involved with it. Like, having the helicopter up there, I put them the whole, the whole entire mint. They were in the helicopter, and they were switching in and out. And I wanted to make this something not, not just that I enjoy, but that my family can enjoy. Yeah. So – I've, I, I flew my whole family out there, and we all stayed in one big house, and we made a whole week of it. And that, to me, like just coming home after qualifying and tech and contingency and getting to hang out with them, it was cool because my mom, after the race, she's like, you really like this, don't you? I'm like, yeah, I do. I'm like, I'm dead set on this. Like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. She's like, I can tell. You just have, like, this different different 
I guess, glow about you. Like, you're just, like, radiating energy. Like, you know, it's just cool. So I I can tell you that my family fully supports me, and it couldn't – I wish I had my dad here still, obviously. We were best friends. But, you know, if I can't have my dad right there by my side, I'll have my whole family. Yeah. You know? You, you do it what you have, you know? And my family, yeah. they've always been supportive. And uh, my next goal or mission, I guess, would be to put my mom in the passenger seat of a trophy truck in Johnson Valley and go scare her for 20 miles and <laughs> come back in. So that way she has a little bit better respect for what that really is, you know? That'll be cool. That has to be a piece of content. Oh, it will 100%. <laughs> yep. No, that's awesome. rad. Mom goes for a trophy truck ride. I dig it. <laughs> awesome. Well, cool. Well, thank you for joining us. Yeah. That was awesome, man. Yeah. No, I appreciate y'all having man. me on. Thanks. Good we're fun gonna, meeting you, buddy. Yeah, we're going to make some good memories starting from here on out. So. Absolutely. 2024, let's go. You? I'm looking forward to it.